for the blue cards. Mm -hmm. This is uh, another one that you liked, which was Escape Protocol. Yeah, I don't know if it's actually going to see play or not, but this card, some version of this card has been hyped like every time it's come around. And I really haven't seen too many people talking about this one, so I figured we'd talk about it real quick. This card is almost Astral Slide. Yeah, which was like a huge deck back in the day and a deck that a lot of people love to play. It's a really fun deck to play. Um, there's also a couple like EDH decks that are built around cycling and astral slide. So this effect is a lot of fun for a lot of people. This one you do have to pay. It's a triggered ability that you pay for the effect, which makes it a little bit worse than astral slide. It, this card is escape protocol. It's on the screen there. Uh, okay, one in a blue for an enchantment. It says whenever you cycle a card, you may pay one. When you do exile target artifact or creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So whenever you cycle something, you can pay one mana and then blink something you control. An yeah. artifact or creature. I don't know if that's good enough for any format, really. But like I said, Astral Slide was a much beloved deck, and Powered Down Astral Slide is still like almost Astral Slide. One other thing that I wanted to mention is like this kind of works strangely with Mutate, the keyword Mutate, where if you you know have a big mutated creature on the battlefield, cycle something, you know, pay for Escape Protocol. What ends up happening is. If you blink that mutated creature, when it re-enters the battlefield, um, all of those mutated creatures enter separately. If you've gone really tall with a creature, you know, you have like four mutated creatures all, all as one game object, and, you know, your opponent's swinging wide trying to kill you, you cycle something, pay for this, you blink that mutated creature, when it comes back, you now have four blockers. Yeah, it so, like breaks them apart. Yeah, it's kind of kind of a unique interaction. Next up is a card that I had to, like, look up after you posted it, and that's Keep Safe. Yeah, I put it here just to make you look it up and think about it, because I didn't... Like, this is a card that I think went underneath a lot of people's radar. You kind of have to look at it a certain... Like, you have to squint your eyes a little bit and look at it in just a certain light to see what it actually is. One in a blue for an instant, and it's counter-target spell that targets a permanent you control and then you draw a card. So it's kind of shelter, which gave protection to a creature, protection from a color yep. to a creature, and then drew a card. So it's in that same vein. It's also kind of like bumping up against dive down, mm -hmm. but there is a really big difference between one mana and two mana. Well, there's a big difference between replacing the card also. There is, there is. Is a card that could definitely see standard play if people are trying to Voltron up a mutate thing. Or playing a card that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Just, I, I thought it was a unique piece that kind of does something a little bit different than what we're used to. Like, this is almost hexproof. Like, it's almost dive down in the fact that it, it kind of like quasi gives something hexproof. Like, it's only once it counters this spell, which is like what you want to do with Hexproof like 99% of the time anyway, plus it replaces itself. It's not any more vulnerable to like two instant speed removal spells than Dive Down was. They would be like cast down and you'd be like dive down and cast down again. They still kind of like lose to that. So like I don't think it has an additional weakness unless it's like two sorcery speed pieces of removal or something where they're like cast down and you're like, keep safe and then they play some sorcery that yeah. dive down would have prevented but it is like it is right there it could it could definitely see play yeah and like i said i mean the draw card you were hesitant because it's one mana more but the draw card is a big thing too it is like it is. i mean I it's important like especially in the kind of deck that this wants to be in it's important that that replaces itself like in this kind of deck you're not really trying to get card quality you're trying to get quantity like you yeah. just want to draw all the cards and like all of them are mediocre but it doesn't matter because you've drawn all of them yes you've just gone through your deck yeah. This next card I wanted to talk about for two reasons that really don't have anything to do with the card itself. Awesome. <laughs> this is a Mythos of Aluna. It's yes. a two blue blue for a sorcery. It's part of a cycle. There's a whole bunch of these Mythoses, like one for each of the legendary mutate creatures. I wanted to point out the super sick Seb cave painting art. Like the whole hey. cycle has these awesome like cave painting style. This one is a clone. It makes clones of things. It makes a token that's a copy of you know, whatever you're going to target with it. And it also says if green red was spent to cast this spell, instead create a token that's a copy of the permanent, etc. 
step it has when this permanent enters the battlefield if it's a creature it fights up to one creature you don't control so it gains fight etb two blue blue clone or permanent and then it's red green blue blue have it come into play and it clones something and if it's a creature it fights the reason that i wanted to point this card out also is because of the way that it works with mutate when you clone a mutated thing you're cloning the whole stack all the abilities that are mutated onto that creature yeah even if like that creature leaves the battlefield isn't around anymore like if you spent you know red green blue blue and cloned it and bought their thing and killed it your copy would still have all of the text from the whole mutate which is kind of a little bit counterintuitive so i just wanted to point that out really yeah. didn't have anything to do with this card in particular but just the way clones work with mutate sometimes they have new mechanics and like you can feel like they took the set and they were like no maybe we won't do this thing because it's confusing and <laughs> yeah. this set they were just like oh no confusing? we're doing all the confusing do things. it next up is c dash or octopus yeah which this card's is... sweet um, Ninjatopus. Ninjatopus. <laughs> so it's one blue blue for a flash 2-2 two, two that has whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, and it has mutate for one and a blue. Since the creature itself has flash, it can mutate at instant speed. Kind of ninja of the deep hours. Kind of. It's also kind of like curious obsession. It's weird, all yeah. the things it kind of is. I, I think it really will incentivize people to play like one mana, one one flyers. And there's a couple really good ones in standard right now, like in blue and a couple in white. If you're on the play and you flash in Spectral Sailor and then the next turn you attack and then you flash in the Octopus and put it on your Spectral Sailor, it's now a 2-2 and it drew you a card. Putting a Curious Obsession on it. Or all in because you don't have that extra mana to protect it. But you did just like draw a card. Pretty solid. Like in like a tempo-y blue-white or blue-red deck where you're trying to stick the Octopus and then ride it to victory. Yeah, I mean if you think back to like Mono Blue from Zed eight months ago at this point this is kind of the same game plan as that deck and this is where that keep safe that we were just talking about i think this is part of that same deck you know you flesh out this octopus draw a couple cards play your keep safe to keep it safe you know draw your card off that and get all of the cards in your hand yeah they're all kind of mediocre do whatever but you don't care because you just get all the cards in your hand and like if you're blue white you also have god's willing have all these like ways to, to protect your guy and c dash or octopus unlike curious obsession is just not a dead draw late in the game yeah, right it's, it's also like randomly a creature so things like dovin's veto don't work against it and like this deck still gets to play mystical dispute it has a lot going for it speaking of flash creatures for the last year and a half wizards has just been trying to push like a flash deck they just give it an extra card every set and this card is voracious great shark boy is it great it is three <laughs> blue blue yeah. For a flash 5-4, a 5-mana flash 5-4 is as a limited card you would always play. Right. But it also has, uh, when it enters the battlefield, counter target artifact or creature spell. Always a 2-for-1 because like this thing is always going to be a relevant body. Sometimes when you'd like flash in uh, Frilled Mystic, like the body wasn't super relevant. You know, you got to counter their spell, but the body really didn't matter a whole lot. With a 5-4, that body is always going to be relevant. It's also like you felt bad flashing in Frilled Mystic unless you were getting value. This, like if they pass the turn and don't use their mana, you just flash in a 5-4. Here's a clock. It might not be like four of in like the blue green flash deck, a two of like it's a conditional counter spell. I think we said it was like essence scatter and a null. Yeah. There's always one of those. Um, and I know we talked about this really quickly before the show started, but on my way home from work today, so it's kind of a good thing that uh, we didn't record yesterday because I wouldn't have thought of this. Um, but this card kind of reminds me of uh, Torrential Gear Hulk. Torrential Gear Hulk had a little bit more versatility because it could pick like any card in your graveyard. But mm -hmm. like I said, this is almost always going to be a two for one. And it's always going to close a game super quick if left unchecked. You're probably going to get some sort of value out of it. I mean, Torrent Torrential Gear Hulk saw a ton of play. Uh, people were even, you know, sledding it in as like an extra Snapcaster Mage and Modern at the time. Like this card would certainly see some amount of Pioneer play, yeah. even if it's, you know, just a test out or whatever. But I think it's worth testing out there and it will definitely see some some standard play. It could be like a control finisher that just also has mm -hmm. extra value on it, like kind of yeah. like uh, Gearhulk was. I mean, you don't really care if it dies because you countered their spell and like that's what you're trying to do anyway. If they don't randomly have an answer to it, you just kill them in four turns. And it's just like, oh. 
out. I countered your spell and then killed you with this. This is great. It's also really good with time wipe. You like mm -hmm. counter their spell and then if you have to like wrath the board, you just pick up your counter spell. It's also really good with escape protocol, right? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Yeah. Cycle, counter your you're never resolving another another creature or an artifact again. Never again. <laughs> <laughs>